God's blessings, friends of the border town. It's Father Pete. As we begin this Mass for the third Sunday of Advent, once again, I return to this song that I used both at the Immaculate Conception Mass and in my Advent Reflection. As I stated in the Reflection, in the entire history of the Catholic Church, only six couples have been recognized as Christian saints for their role of being moms and dads. We need to really focus on those ministries that are taken for granted, the role of Christian parents, and how important they are as the primary educators of our children in today's society. May we be blessed by mom, dad, children, and the angels that guide them through proper conduct. May God bless all of our families as we prepare to celebrate the sacred liturgy. Keep well, dear Mary, be well, dear Mary, alone in the darkness, let God be your light. We pray, dear Mary, you stay, dear Mary, for Jesus, Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice, for the Lord is near. That phrase from the fourth chapter of Philippians prefaces what we call Gaudete Sunday, or Rejoice Sunday, which tells us that we're not yet at Christmas, but we're getting close. So the color of the day the optional color of the day is rose, not pink, rose. That is for you, Larry Lindholm, because priests don't wear pink, they wear rose. That's the liturgical color. 
which symbolizes the mixture of the darkness and the light, kind of like a pre-dawn. The dawn has not yet arrived, but it is getting close. And on this day, we remind ourselves that we need to prepare ever so stridently for the coming of our Lord in the way we conduct ourselves and share that love with each other. Let's do that together as we call to mind our sins. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal to one, have mercy upon us. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Santo Dios, Santo Poderoso, Santo Immortal, ten piedad de nosotros, Christe Alehison, Christe Alehison. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and to one, have mercy upon us, Kyrie Alehison, Kyrie Alehison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, Enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord, and my God is the joy of my soul. For he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. My soul rejoices in my God. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. My soul rejoices in my God. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. My soul rejoices in my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In all circumstances give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything, retain what is good, refrain 
from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he also will accomplish it. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, What are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you a prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you so we can give an answer to those who sent us? What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am a voice of one crying out in the desert, Make straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet said, Some Pharisees were also sent, and they asked him, why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize you with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Father John Saviknes was born on December 5, 1913 in Pittston, Pennsylvania and was called home on April 22, 2002. Father John was ordained a priest for the Marians of the Immaculate Conception on August 13, 1944. After various assignments in his order, Father John was asked in 1950 by our diocese first bishop, Martin McNamara, to serve at Notre Dame Church in Clarendon Hills. That same year, Bishop McNamara asked Father John to take care for St. Mary's Parish in Plano, Illinois, and St. Patrick's Mission in Bristol. In the 1950s, the parish and the mission comprised the entire territory of Kendall County, Father John served as pastor there from 1950 until 1960. In 1953, St. Anne's Mission was established in Oswego, Illinois. A church and hall was constructed. Many years later, the mission became a parish and was relocated to a large church and community center. It is now under the care of diocesan priests. In 1958, St. Mary's School was opened in Plano, Illinois. Now, you might be asking why I am bringing up the name of a priest who died in 2002 and why I am even talking about the Marians of the Immaculate Conception when Viatorians populate the southern end of the diocese and have so for years. I have to tell you that in my formative years as a priest and my initial years as a priest, especially during the times that I was struggling, I would turn to the Marians uh, in Plano, Illinois, next to my hometown of Sandwich, Illinois, uh, where I was raised, to speak to Father Boniface Visnoris and Jerry uh, Zalonis and Tony Nakunas and those wonderful priests who kind of guided me through the uh, bumps and, and hills of uh, the initial years of priesthood. I had often gone back to Plano, Illinois my first ten years as a priest, I actually celebrated Spanish Masses every Sunday in Plano, no matter where I was serving in the diocese. And Father Bonnie and Father Jerry and Father Tony were wonderful support for me during my initial years of the priesthood. So in 2002, 
when the Marians of the Immaculate Conception asked me to serve as a master of ceremonies for Father John's funeral, I was a little bit taken aback. I didn't know Father John very well, but I knew what the Marians represented and who they were. And I was very honored that they wanted me there for that particular service. Bishop Roger Kaffer was going to be in attendance, and they wanted to make sure that he had all his provisions taken care of. So uh, that's why I was at the Mass. Now, normally when I would celebrate Masses there, I would uh, have all my vestments ready in the sacristy of the church. So when I showed up for the actual funeral Mass, I had noticed that my alb had disappeared. One of the Marians had decided to take my alb and wear it at the Mass. Now, I have to tell you, to be honest, that the Marians were wonderful souls and they were great people, but they were very good at that time of washing their vestments. So I ended up having to put on one of the old vestments that was there that had not been laundered for a good long time. And I'm going to be honest with you, I was searching the congregation to find out who was wearing my vestment. One Marian priest after another that had been at that funeral, that would con celebrate that funeral, I looked at them to see who stole my alb until I found the culprit who was laying in the casket. They decided to take the only clean alb that they could find and put it on Father John, and I was out of an alb. And I ended up bringing another alb and all that. But it was my one contribution to Father John's funeral that will be with Father John for the rest of his life. God bless Father John. As I resign myself to wearing this putrid smelling alb and realizing where my alb had went, as I was reflecting on that particular story and the putrid alb that I was wearing, this particular weekend there is a saint named Maximus the Confessor that actually offered a reflection on these readings that very much parallel this story. This is what Maximus the Confessor wrote. If women who have the care of a home will on certain days wash with water the garments that are soiled, should we not also make ready our souls for the birthday of the Lord, cleaning with our tears and stains of our conscience? And they, should they find the garments so soiled and stained that they cannot be made clean with water alone, add to the water the softening of oil and the acrimony of soap, we likewise, should we have committed sins that are not washed away by repentance alone, let us add the oil of almsgiving and the bitterness of fasting. We call this Sunday Rejoice Sunday, Gaudete, Rejoice, because we realize that Christ is near, but we also need to realize that we have to prepare accordingly for the coming of the Lord. If we're going to ask God to be in our hearts, then we have to make our hearts clean. That requires confession, uh, absolution, uh, penance for our sins. On uh, this particular weekend, the 12th and 13th of December, I am offering confessions over at St. Patrick's after the 1030 Mass. For anyone who wants it, social distance confessions, I call them, will be separated by six feet. The idea is, it's like cleaning a house. If we clean the house prior to the big party, then we are ready to accept our guests. If we clean our souls and our lives in preparation for the coming of God, then we are ready to accept this light. And that's what we need to do constantly. We need constantly to be cleansed of those things which separate us from God. And that's why we have the season of Advent. Four weeks, as each light is being successively lit, we continually try to get ready for God's coming both with the decorations and all those nice things of the secular world, and by cleaning our hearts and by living like Christ. The more we live like the light, the more the light shines brightly in our hearts. But that does require a bit of perseverance on our part. It requires us to listen to the word, to receive the sacrament, and then to go out and live like Christ. If you have not been afforded the opportunity of receiving the sacrament, please call us. I will be most welcome to come to your homes and offer you the sacrament to do what I can to help you out 
You are not alone in any of this, but it is my responsibility to cleanse my heart so I can live my vocation just as you are to cleanse your heart to live out yours. In our readings today, each of the three readings focus on this cleansing of the heart. The great theologians I researched for today's homily interpret the gospel of being ready not to focus on the secular trappings of the world, but to prepare the way of the Lord by having a discipline of humility. And that is what we need to all have in our lives. If we've been praying, if we've been fasting, if we've been taking care of the needy, we are doing what God asks us to do. Those are the gifts, those are the responses to prayer that's going to get us to heaven. Not necessarily the gifts from the tree, but the love in our hearts that is reflected by how we live our lives with each other. Which is why this Mass is always the source and summit of what we do, and that our response to what we uh, receive in this Mass is how we show Christ how much we respect Him. I would like to conclude my homily by focusing on the words of St. Gregory the Great, who some 1,400 years ago reflected on the same preparation of the Lord's coming that applies to today's era. You know, what he's talking about with this life of humility has been lived by the Marians of the Immaculate Conception in Kendall County and beyond, has been lived by the Viatorians who still serve in Kankakee County and beyond, and certainly by a great number of priests and deacons and bishops who have embraced the call of God and have lived it correctly. Gregory the Great offers these words, which talk about this gift of humility and how to be made clean, reflected by today's scripture readings. This is what the great Pope writes. In all things whatsoever, dearest brethren, that you do, hold fast to humility as to the root of every good work. Pay not heed to the things in which you are better than others, but to those in which you are worse, so that while you keep before you the example of those that are better than yourself, you may, through humility, be enabled to ascend to greater things by the bountiful mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This is our prayer. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. Hear our prayers, O God, as we place our needs before you. For all bishops and leaders of the church, that they listen to the cries of the poor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For catechists, teachers, and ministers of the word, that they may be faithful messengers of God's word, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For members of this church who are discouraged or depressed, that they persevere in prayer and find strength in God's loving care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who form this worshiping assembly, 
that we may be united in prayer and thanksgiving to God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, that they find God's love in the hands of their caregivers, especially today we remember those on our parish's sick list, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died, that they may find the promise of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions offered during this last week, that they and their families be embraced by God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Well, God, you have done great things for us. Strengthen us as we follow John the Baptist's call to change our lives. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord of my iniquity, wash me and cleanse me of my sin. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, 
and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Anne, St. Patrick, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, power, and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of our Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So on December 12th, while this Mass is taking place, we are going to be celebrating Our Lady of Guadalupe over at St. Patrick's. We have Las Estrellas Mariachis de Chicago, the Mariachi Stars of Chicago coming to play for us. And we are taking collections this weekend for the El Centro Villaseca uh, Care Center in Joliet, Illinois, uh, the Veterans Home in Mantino. We are looking for new coats and toys and all those things that we had listed for our veterans on the sheet that we had distributed at our parishes. If there's any way that you can help us, even if you give gift cards, we can send those to the Veterans Home. We can certainly send them to the Villa Seca. Please feel free to do so. We just want to make sure we take care of the poor and the needy and those who really need God's help during this time. As always, sunshine phone calls, pastoral visits, whatever you can do uh, to help everybody out. I want to do it. Hopefully you can do it. Let's just make sure that we prepare for Christ's coming by acting like Christ and being lights for the people of our communities. If there's anything I can do to help, please feel free to give us a call. That's why we're here. We will prepare ourselves for the Christmas liturgies, which will take place, God willing, on December 24th at 3 o'clock at St. Patrick's and 5 o'clock at St. Anne's. And on Christmas Day, 9 o'clock at St. Anne's, 10.30 at St. Patrick's in English, and 12 o'clock noon at St. Patrick's in Spanish. God bless all of you. We will make sure that we do what we can to uh, be with you during this time. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass has ended. Now go in peace. Thanks be to God.